Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video you will learn about bottom sheets using Jetpack Compose which is a very common thing you want to do when it comes to building UI because it's a very nice way to actually hide details the user can easily toggle. So let's see how that will look like. In the end a bottom sheet is just something you can you can drag up from the bottom and then hide it again. You also have the option to either set such a peak height so that a little bit of it is always visible. So you could have like a little drag handle or so, like a little icon um, that indicates, hey, user, you can actually drag this up here. Or you could also completely hide this and only be able to toggle this by clicking a button, for example. If you take some care in uh, popular apps, then you will find these bottom sheets all over the place. For example, in Google Maps, they have such a bottom sheet. When you actually click on a location, just as an example, it's actually quite important that you know how to implement this because in my experience, that is something that you need quite often when it comes to building UI. So, welcome in Android Studio. Let's actually see how it works to implement this. In the end, doing that in Jetpack Compose is luckily pretty easy, but what we need for that is actually a special type of scaffold. In case you don't know what a scaffold is, a scaffold is kind of a layout with specific um, placeholders for specific UI items. So very commonly when you apply things like material design, so the, the typical Google, um, Google UI components, then you might you, your app might have something like a navigation draw. It might have something like a toolbar or a bottom sheet. And for these things, we have a scaffold to easily implement these common UI components like a navigation draw, like a bottom sheet. And this scaffold, this bottom sheet scaffold we have here is just a wrapper around that that deals with just toggling our bottom sheet, for example, and making sure we can easily add content to it. So if we import that, you can see we need to add some kind of sheet content. That is whatever we want to be displayed in the bottom sheet itself. If we take a look at my app, that is just this text here, nothing else. But of course, in a real app, you would put some kind of list of items in there or whatever you want actually to be displayed. And you can also see that uh, there is still a red underline um, under bottom sheet scaffold. So we can simply put the cursor on that, press Alt plus enter, and then we need to add this annotation here, this experimental material API to our main activity because yeah, Google still doesn't consider this stable, but they like to just keep these annotations in there for forever, it feels like. Um, so in my experience, using these APIs marked as experimental is usually not an issue. If you need to have something that is really stable, I would probably not use that and write some custom solution or so, but that's not what we're here for. So as I said, on the one hand, we have this block of code in which we can put the content for the bottom sheet. And we have this piece of code in which we can put the content that belongs in our actual screen. So for example, our actual button that should chuggle our bottom sheet. So we can put that in a box, center it on our screen. Let's import that. Say we want to fill the whole size of our screen and what else could we do here let's just format that a bit we could say um actually yeah let's give it a, like a content alignment of center so everything in the box is centered and in there we can then put our button that can simply toggle our bottom sheet right now we won't put anything in on click because we don't have the functionality yet to easily toggle that but we can give it a little bit of text that I say toggle sheet. Cool, so far for the content of our scaffold, but the cool thing or the important thing for this video is of course the content of our bottom sheet. So let's go in here in this block and I will keep it very simple here as I said. We are just going to have actually just another box that we give a size, so modifier dot fill max width, so we just um, uh, make, make sure that the, the box fills the whole size of our, the whole width of our screen and we want to give it a height. So I will actually give it a fixed height here of 300 dp, but of course you could also use something like fill max height or so, then it would just fill your whole screen, it would be responsive. That is of course something that you need to um, estimate how you want to have that depending on your situation. Or something that would also of course make sense is to just completely leave away specifying this height here because then it will just occupy as much height as it needs. So if you have some kind of menu items in that bottom sheet, then I would just leave, leave away that height because then it will just occupy as much height as all your menu items need together. 
But in here, so this that this looks somehow decent, I will just assign this height here because we only have a single text and the text will say bottom sheet. And we can also give it a font size of 60 SP. Import SP, format that a bit like this. And we also want to make sure that the text is centered. So we again use content alignment center. Okay, something we can also do here is inside of this bottom sheet scaffold, we can specify a lot of parameters to change the behavior of our bottom sheet. So if we just, uh, if we just type sheet, for example, we can change the background color to something like color green. So we now have a green bottom sheet. And if we now launch our app, then we should already be able to see something that is still the app that I did. Let's wait until it actually finishes building and launches the app. And there we go. And you can see our sheet is peaking a little bit here. So there is this little peak area in which we can um, kind of use it to drag. And if we do that, then we can drag it up. So we already have a kind of working bottom sheet which really wasn't a lot of work and that is pretty cool. But how can we now accomplish it that we can click this button to kind of programmatically toggle this bottom sheet between the collapsed and expanded state? And also, what would you do if you, for example, would want to get rid of this little peak area and you want to completely hide it and just only be able to toggle it using this button? Let's take a look back in Android Studio for that. And starting with the button, if we want to change the state of our bottom sheet, so whether it's expanded or collapsed, that is how we call it, then we need something like a bottom sheet state. And we can get a reference to this bottom sheet state by saying, well, sheet state is equal to remember bottom sheet state. And we need to specify an initial value for that state, which is either expanded or collapsed. So we can say, okay, we want our sheet to be collapsed initially. And then we, we can't directly pass this bottom sheet state to our bottom sheet scaffold. We actually also need another state, which is a scaffold state. And then we can put this sheet state into the scaffold state. So we can simply do this by saying val scaffold state is remember bottom sheet scaffold state. And here we have the option to pass our bottom sheet state. So by default, it will yeah, just construct some kind of default state for that. But if we want to explicitly change the behavior of our bottom sheet, or we want to have some, we want to read some important metrics here, for example, to implement an animation during our swipe process kind of, then we need to pass our own state to actually get these values. So here for the bottom sheet state, we can simply pass our sheet state now. And now we can take the scaffold state and actually pass it to our bottom sheet scaffold. And I think it's called um, scaffold state. Yeah, so scaffold state is scaffold state. There we go. And now what we can do is we can take this sheet state and go inside of our button on click function. So when we click on this button, we will say sheet state dot expand. And that would simply expand our bottom sheet. You can see we still get an error here. If we hover over this, it tells us Okay, suspend function expand should actually be called only from a coroutine or another suspend function. If you're not familiar with coroutines, don't worry. Um, the reason why this is basically an error is because that is a function that takes a little bit of time to complete. Because what will happen here is it will simply block our code until our sheet is fully expanded. So it's something that can take half a second or whatever we have for this animation duration. And to actually be able to execute such a suspending function, we say, we need a scope, a coroutine scope. If you're not familiar with all this coroutine stuff, really don't worry, this is a little bit more advanced and I do have a very detailed playlist about coroutines. It's basically all about asynchronous programming. But to fix the simple issue here, we can say we get a scope by saying, remember, coroutine scope. And then we can use the scope, which is aware of our composition's life cycle. So as soon as uh, this leaves the composition, then it will also cancel whatever is executed in the scope. So we can say scope.launch and inside of this launch block, we are now able to actually expand our sheet. But we don't just want to expand our sheet, we also want to be able to collapse it again if it is already expanded. 
So we need some kind of if condition here. If the sheet state is actually expanded, or let's say if it is collapsed, then we want to expand it. And else, if it is expanded, um, then we want to collapse it. So we say sheet state collapse. And that's how we can do that programmatically. Let's launch that app again and take a look here in on my phone. And if we now click this button, you can see our bottom sheet will animate to the expanded and to the collapse state pretty fine. Let's see what else we could, what else interesting information we could get from this sheet state here. For example, we can get the current fraction of our swiping process so that we that we can understand in our code at which current fraction we are with swiping our bottom sheet. So if we swiped halfway through, then this would be 50%. And you might wonder why do we need such a value? Well, that is super important if you actually want to kind of link an animation to your bottom sheet. So you could imagine that yeah, some kind of other content moves into your moves onto the screen when you actually swipe away the bottom sheet. And for that, you actually need to know at which kind of um, percentage, at which fraction the current swipe process of the bottom sheet is. So let's just go, for example, to the button here. Um, let's say bottom sheet fraction and we could simply add this here to the button text so so that you can just see how that would work and we can get that by using sheet state dot um, progress dot fraction and if we launch this then you can see by default it is just one so 100% and as soon as we start a swipe then it will actually start at zero and now go up to 100% when we actually arrive here at the end position. So that way you can now, you, you now have a, a number that you can use to calculate some other animation value, for example, which is pretty cool. That, is, that makes it very easy to add animations to this. And when we already add animations, you can also change the animation your bottom sheet is toggled if you do that programmatically by adding this to your sheet state. So here, for example, you can specify an animation spec, for example, a spring, which is a spring spec. So we, we can have some kind of spring animation and we could give a little bit of damping ratio, which you can, of course, play around with spring that, let's say, wanted high bouncy. And if we then relaunch the app, go here and click our button, you can see <laughs> that is now quite bouncy. But just as you can see that we can actually also change the animation, how our bottom sheet is actually expanded or not by just adding a single line of code. So that is pretty cool, even though I don't like this one, but just that you see how easy that is. And finally, what I want to show you is how you get rid of this peak height. That is in the end, just a single property here in your bottom sheet scaffold. So here you can see you have a sheet peak height, which we can simply set to zero DP. And if we then launch it, then you will see that yeah the sheet is basically hidden by default but we can still toggle it by clicking our button so overall i think jetpack compose makes it very easy to add a bottom sheet and you can of course also add multiple of these in your screen if you have multiple different sections however that will be really dependent on the use case but i had some apps where this was quite an advantage or where this was a good way to solve something but it's not always like that of course very often however you also want to do something or use something like a navigation drawer if you want to learn how to implement that in jetpack compose then i recommend to watch this video.